continue. As we all know, this year, what we are aiming at, what we are focused on, is our growth in the law. Not only that, but we also want to grow in every area of our life. But what we need to really understand and do this morning is for us to really begin to grow up. Hallelujah. I know it's tough. Hallelujah. Growing is not easy. You know, when we were kids, and I believe the kids here uh, sometimes, uh, not sometimes, but mostly uh, wanting to grow. They want to be teenagers. When they get to teenagers, they want to really be adults. I, I remember somebody keeps reminding me that now I'm an adult. I said, please. <laughs> please. <laughs> you know, and most of the time, it's because of the freedoms they want. They think that when you're an adult, you can go out without anyone checking on you. You can do things your own way without anyone asking you questions. But they forget that it comes with responsibilities. Hallelujah. Unfortunately, it's the other way with Christians. Christians don't want to grow up because we know it comes with responsibilities. And we know that if we grow up, we will be respond will be expected to be responsible for certain things. Because you can't grow up as a Christian and still do other things. The Bible that you read is going to begin to uh, tell you the things that you have to do. And because of that, Christians generally don't want to grow up. Hallelujah. My theme this morning is, uh, I mean, I'm just talking to some interesting uh, group of people, both here and everywhere. I mean, Christians everywhere. And my theme this morning is very simple. Forever baby Christians, I'm calling on you to grow up. You know, we have some forever baby Christians. They are eternally babies. Hallelujah. They, I mean, nothing moves them. They always want to be at class one. Hallelujah. While some children want to move from class two to class four. I mean, I mean some Christians don't want to move from class one to class two. They wish they are always in class one. Why? Because when you are in class one, people get to do things for you. Amen. Your child that is in class one, you, you have to really uh, uh, bath him, uh, him or her. You have to feed him or her. You have to walk him to school or walk her to school. I mean, you can't leave your class one baby to go to school by himself or herself. True or false? And how many of us, as Christians, want to forever remain babies? Because the moment people begin to see growth in us, they begin to, the church, the people around us, our leaders, begin to call us into greater responsibilities. But we forget that, and, and we don't want to do that. And Unfortunately, we forget that <laughs> as we grow up, the blessing of the Lord upon our lives also increases. And there are many things, you know, we become uh, children, I would say even special children of God, who God is able to draw us to himself and begin to tell us mysteries. That's how he begins to deal with us. But it's also frustrating for leaders and for teachers that they keep teaching, but the people never grow. In fact, it happened to Jesus. As Jesus kept teaching the people, he got to a point, he told them, you guys, you have to eat my body and drink my blood. Everybody began to run away. And Jesus looked at them, and look at the other 12 that were left and he said, would you also want to follow them? Because, I mean, look, it's like 
What else do I have to tell those people? It got to a point Jesus said, you guys are following me because of the food you got to eat. Hallelujah. You are not growing. I'm expecting you to grow, but you are not growing. All that you want, you know, that's what babies want. They want to be fed. So he said that you guys are following me because you want food to eat. It's not because you want to hear the unadulterated word of God that brings life to the hearers. That's not what you want. All that you want is that you follow me, I feed you, I heal you, I cast out your demons, and you go and sleep. But then he said, that's not why you are being called. Paul got frustrated, and to an extent that he began to question the Corinthian church. He was, he felt that, look, we have come to a point where you, as children of God, are expected to do certain things. But he comes and they are still fighting among themselves. There are quarrels among them. There's confusion in the church. And he's saying that this is not expected to happen. I thought by this time we would have grown beyond us. Hallelujah. And my thing is that, look, you guys, I want to see you as Paul saw the church, the Berean church. Let's go to um, Acts chapter 17, verse 11. I want you to see where I want you to be. And I want you to be noble. He said that now the Berean Jews were of more noble character than those in Thessalonica. I want you to be of noble character than every other Christian. That is where I want you to be. I don't want you to be a Christian or Christians who are still really always sitting down, not knowing the word, not understanding the word, and always sitting back, wanting somebody to feed them, wanting somebody to pray for them, wanting somebody to talk to them, wanting somebody to do everything for them. I don't want you to be at that point. I want you to grow beyond that. I want you to be noble Christians, Christians with noble character. So that I can boldly say that your KPG and uh, I mean Christians or members, you are not like the others I know. Hallelujah. When you hear the word of God, you sit down and you go into it because you are intelligent in the word. You have knowledge in the word. So you go and sit down and begin to look line after line what we are hearing, whether it is from the Lord. Because people who don't do that, you will see, I mean, I'll, I'll let you know in the course of this uh, sermon, that people who don't do that, they are blown everywhere. They hear that there is something over there. They are there. They hear that there is a new teaching here. They, they are better than Carl Lewis and Ben Johnson and uh, uh, what's his name, the latest one? We said both. We are better than them because we can run. So everything that we hear, we go in after it. Hallelujah. Oh yeah, man. So you don't want to hit us to listen to anybody. I don't, I'm not saying I don't want you to listen to anyone. But what I'm saying is that even if you listen to somebody, go back and sit down. Hallelujah. This morning, this dawn, when no, it was last night, somehow. I mean, I was I was I was praying. And my mommy had been outside really with the kids and things like that. And she came inside and and the point said, Daddy, have you seen this? I think she, he, she and her dad started doing something with posting something on Facebook or something. And she suddenly uh, uh, saw something. And I said, what it is? Then she said, look. And I was shocked. I was shocked that in this day and age, in fact, recently we had a testimony by what's what's her name Esther, saying that she 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 was asked to go to a pastor because the pastor said she started seeing something about her, and she was supposed to go for the pastor to back her. This one, <laughs> my goodness. 
this. This is the first thing man. Women were being bad. I mean, they, they were being, I, mean, I, I don't even know how to describe it, by male pastors. One would bath them, and they have those, uh, how do you call that thing, uh, the, the big pan that they basin. And it was in front of the altar like this. And the women will strip naked, sit in it, and the pastor will bath them, and after that, they will move to the end. He, I, I don't know whether he wiped them or whatever. But then they will move to another pastor on the uh, uh, next to him, and he will pomade them. And they will move to another pastor, and then he will give them uh, a pound. And then they will go, and then and they are walking and boldly in the church. And they will go and wear now wear their dress, and they will come and join the congregation. What's it mean? And people are shouting and clapping and, and I'm saying that this is not normal. When did Jesus bad people? <laughs> Hallelujah. At best he washed their feet. When Peter said that what bad means, he said, he needed money. He said, no, 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 you don't need that. You need to, your, your feet to be washed. Hallelujah. And this is there is a camera on this. I'm telling you. Beloved, this is why God says that grow up. Because if we don't grow up, we will also go through this. In another form, maybe they will not bat us, but they will give us. I've heard in this church, somebody had said that he went somewhere and they said that. They, they, they prophesied over his life that he will become a prophet. And to become that prophet that he, God is saying he should become, he should go take something, go put in water and take his bath for one week. And he said, I went to do it. And then after that, I had to go back. When I went back, he was giving me new apache and all that. And lo and behold, that was when I met somebody from this church doing evangelism and I ended up in this church. And I said, look. And this he shared in discipleship class. It was not in my office. It was in the open. Hallelujah. How can you have to take a bath with a certain kind of whatever concussion to become a prophet? I thought prophets are made by God. He said he gave them gifts. When he ascended on high, he released gifts unto them. I don't I didn't see that he gave them some compulsion to go and take their bath. Hallelujah. So my, my thing is that we as KPT and we have to be noble. And the only way we can become noble Christians is to grow up. We can be where everyone is and then still expect that we will be raised up and will be called noble. He says, now the very Jews were of noble character than those in Thessalonica. Yes, they were better than some other people. And we can be better than some other people. We're not claiming that we are somebody, but Bible is saying that we can be much noble than others. And how? He said, for they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. If you tell me that I should go and bath with a concussion so that I can become a prophet, I need to check the scriptures and see whether that is true. Whether that is what Jesus wants me to do. I will have to find out from Jesus if he did that to anyone. I don't have to take everything like who can say come. I don't have to just, because you said it, I have to believe it. Because you said it, I have to do it. I have my Bible. And I have to go and study it. I have told you time and time again, if I tell you something, go and check from the Bible. Even what we read here, you see it there. Check your own Bible and see whether that is inside your Bible as well. Let's not 
take anything for granted. Because we are in the days that if you take anything for granted, people will tell you lies. Paul said, if anyone comes to you to teach you any other gospel apart from what I'm teaching you, or even if an angel comes from heaven and teach you another gospel, may that person be a curse. That's what Paul said. Let not anybody teach you any other thing. And the only way you will be able to discern what you are being taught, whether it is from God or not, is to go into the Bible. Hallelujah. My desire, my cry, my prayer is that we will begin to grow up. Because if we sit down and we don't do what we are expected to do, and we don't hear the word of God as it is, and begin to really progress in our faith, what is going to happen is that people are coming up to us and tell us stories. They will come. They will tell us stories. And there are many stories out there. Bible says that the Antichrist is already amongst us. Let us be careful. People are teaching things. And it didn't start yesterday. In Paul's time, it was there. People were going into people's homes. He says people were going to the homes of wicked women and were trying to really seduce them. People would come to you with all kinds of things. They will tell you, you see, your pastor doesn't come to your house, but as for me, I will come to your house. I love you more than your pastor. Hallelujah. But they forget that your pastor is taking care of a lot more people. And that is why your pastor is now really giving you mentors, other people that will really speak to you on a daily basis. Hallelujah. And they will then report to the pastor if there's anything that has to really uh, get the pastor to move to you, then the pastor does that. But then they don't have anyone. They are just really opportunists. And they move from place to place, trying to take advantage of people that are weak. You don't have to be weak for somebody to take advantage of you. Begin to be strong. Be strong in your faith. I've heard too many things. And people are not growing up. How can you tell me that I should go and buy a class and then go and cut plantain and then my, all my problems will be finished? Have you checked with me when I'm fornicating? Have you checked with me when I, I am living right for God? But cutting the plantain doesn't solve my problem. Because Bible says that if I, as a child of God, if I call myself a child of God, Bible says that it is my sin that closes God's ears to my prayer. He didn't say that when I catch a blood day, he will hear my prayer. So you go and buy a cutlass. Where in the Bible did God ask people to go and buy cutlasses and their problem will be solved? It is because we are not knowledgeable. We are not growing up. We are babies. We want everybody to do everything for us. Hallelujah. The days of Christianity where, we, you know, we are not committed to anything. We don't want to do anything. We don't want to come to church. We don't, if, if we didn't want to come to church, we want to come to church at the time that we feel like coming to church. That's a responsibility. Hallelujah. This week, <laughs> someone I knew said, he said, I no longer pastor a church. And he said, when I used to pastor a church, I never pastored a big church. My church never grew large. But as I, what I do now, he has thousands and probably hundreds of thousands of people following him. But he said, when I used to have a church, I only have a few people. My church was not back a mega church. It was always a small church. He said, because I'll tell people the truth. He says, Christians don't want to be responsible. They will never want to do anything on time. And he says, if I'm preaching and you enter, I will stop the preaching and address you. I will welcome you. And tell you how irresponsible you are coming to church at the time you are coming. He says, he stops. <laughs> he talks to them. He said, oh, welcome, Mr. So -so -so. It's a small church, so he knows everybody's name. Welcome, Mr. 
You welcome to the service. But coming to church at this time is uh, irresponsible and ungodly. Next time, come to church early. Now he goes to the next verse. Now the period. And people were always offended. Hallelujah. He said, he said, I go to places. He has Bible schools as well. He says, I go to places. Because they do, they go all over the world. And he said, I go to places. And I go and I minister the word of God. And he says, as I minister the word, I mean, when we are leaving the hotel, we say we're leaving at 7.30. And at 7.30, if you are not there, we leave you. And most of the time, when they're going to do the ministration on that day or doing ministry on that day, would be far from the hotel. And they rent buses and things like that. And he said, 7.30 on the dot, we don't wait for everyone, everyone, and all the buses move. So if you are still in your room, you will spend the day in your room. I remember when we used to go for retreats. We said the bus will leave at 7 and we'll be here, downstairs, and the bus will be there. And we are waiting for this one. And we are waiting for that one. And the days that we left people, the insults we got. And you, you see, we have come. And when we came, you have left us. When did you come? At your own time. And you decide to wait. The, the whole church should wait for you. And you don't have any remorse. But you still have the audacity to speak against the whole church. If you respect the people, the people that came early, you will never say that. You will never speak against them. You will rather apologize to them for wasting their time. Even if they leave you, you they still waited a little while before they left. And you would rather apologize to them. But unfortunately, because we are babies, we are always whining. Your child did the wrong thing, but he's still whining. Hallelujah. He did the bad thing and you beat that child. You gave him some too small whatever. It, it's not, it doesn't mean hurt. Hallelujah. But then he will begin to cry. Wanting you to apologize. Yes. Oh, parents. Am I wrong? Because you don't lie against, uh, you don't lie to men. That's what Peter said. He said, 
You have not lied to men. You've lied to the Holy Spirit. But it's Peter sitting down. It's not the Holy Spirit. But Peter is not ministering by his power. It's the power of the Holy Ghost ministering through him. So he says, you have not lied to me. If I was, if I sat here by my own power, then you would be uh, lying to me and I wouldn't even see. Hallelujah. But if it's the power of the Holy Spirit, then you are not lying to me. You're lying to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Are we still friends? Yes. All right. I love you. I love you too. Amen. 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 I love it when you love me. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, a lot of us are not growing. And it's quite interesting. If, I mean, we can look at a parable of the sower in diverse ways. And one of the ways I want to look at it this morning is that some people, some Christians, they died the next day they became Christians. Because the work that came to them, that really sanctified them, that really edified them, the birds came and took it away. And we have those Christians who seriously begin to grow. And because they are not solidly really grounded in the word, the enemy comes with a scorching sun and they are dead because they can the roots can go deep I want you to go deep say I will go deeper, I will go deeper. hallelujah Amen. because if you grow and go deeper then you realize that what happens is you will and you are able to withstand certain things you know Jesus spoke about um, uh, building on a solid uh, Brown, a, a solid rock. And he said that people build on sand. And when the storm comes, boom, they go off. Hallelujah. But when you build in areas that are really solid, he says the storms will come, yet you will stand. Hallelujah. And, and interestingly for me, that is the way I saw Jesus train his disciples. To an extent that Things came against them even when Jesus had left and they stood. So Jesus, and, and I'm telling you, things will come after you. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be like, oh yeah, I mean, I come to church, I'm fine, I go home, no headaches, no attacks, nothing. I mean, if the devil doesn't care about you, then you are his. I said, if the devil doesn't care about you, then you belong to him. Because if you really don't belong to him, he wants you, so he's going to come after you. Hallelujah. Amen. And Jesus told the, the, this, uh, he told Peter, he said, look, what I see, you don't see. But I see Satan himself sifting you like wheat. And I pray that you understand the word sifting. And when wheat is being sifted, he said he's sifting you like wheat. And I have prayed for you so that Satan won't save you. Is that what he said? He said, I've prayed for you and your friends, all of you, I've prayed for you so that your faith will not fail. That's what Jesus said. I've prayed for you so that your faith will not fail. Now, what does that mean? It means that Satan will come after you but I've prayed for you so that you will stand. Hallelujah. The storm will come, but you will not fall. You will still stand. Hallelujah. That's what Jesus wants us to do. It doesn't mean that as Christians we will go through anything, but Christians who have grown up will be able to stand against certain things that will come after us. People will speak against us. People will insult you. People will offend you. But some people, when they get offended, they do not even check. They feel it's about their feelings. It's not even about the reality. It's not even about the facts. It's not even about the truth. It's about how they feel. But let me tell you that your feelings can deceive you. Hallelujah. If your 
feelings don't deceive you. The first woman you told that I, want, I love you, you marry. Why you go through ten of them? You know the those that are not married are laughing. Hallelujah. Then it means that your feelings really got you to something that was not yours. Amen. Amen. So feelings can be very deceptive. Don't always, I'm not saying that feelings are always bad. Yeah, there are some times that you feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. It's always, it's good. But I'm saying that be careful because feeling can be very deceptive. And the fact that you felt something doesn't mean that it's right. Check. I say check. Be like the very check. Whatever you feel, go check the scriptures. Pray that the Holy Ghost will bring you revelation. It's extremely important. Amen. And, this, and this, the one that fell in tongues, they tried to grow. And they grew to a certain point. Many of us grow to a certain point. And we never bear fruit. And this year, we're going to go through all that. We're going to go through a lot. We're going to go through Jesus' teaching in um, John 15 about the vine. We, we, it is important. We understand these things. How can I grow? How can I grow? If I detach myself from the vine, I will not grow. I need to, as a branch, I need to be attached, not detached. And throughout this thing, we're going to look at all that. How can I grow in my Christian walk? We need to get rid, hallelujah, of certain things. In fact, certain friends have to live our lives. If we want to grow, there are certain friends we need to cut off from our lives. Hallelujah. It is important, I'm telling you, that we grow as believers. Because a lot of us are not growing. Amen. And we have to grow. I don't want you to be a forever baby. I don't want you to be one. The eternal babies. They are eternally babies. They never grow. Hallelujah. Amen. If you never grew, your mother would have thrown you away somewhere by this time. <laughs> I mean, let's, 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 let's figure this out. Let, let's, just, let's just try to imagine this. This is the power of imagination. And you will see it right now. You will see it right now. Like a baby sitting down. I mean, he's still crying like, uh, which of the kids? Is Janelle? Is, has she started now? Yeah, so like Janelle, let's assume Janelle is a, I mean like Janelle and me has four breasts and, <laughs> and she's on the ground. Yeah. I mean all, let's say he's a guy, he's a boy and he's grown beard and he's really at that, I mean a baby and you have to groom his beard. I'm not ready to groom beards here. Baby's beards? No! He grow up! If you grow a beard, learn how to groom it. Hallelujah! Amen. If you are a Christian, because if you are a baby and you begin to grow beard and you are sitting down there wearing, trying to wear shoes and now um, suits and uh, I mean, please. Like Janelle wears skirts and uh, high heels. And <laughs> Hallelujah! Amen. Last week she was wearing skirts and uh, no. Where is the high heels? <laughs> Amen. Amen. But many Christians are like that. They're still, they, they grow. Amen. Amen. And they, they know what high heels mean and they buy them. I don't know who buys for them anyway. And they come to church. And they are so babies. Forever babies. Hallelujah. And they say, oh yeah, I've been here for 10 years. 
The church itself is not like this. <laughs> Hallelujah. They've been here for 10 years. And if in that those 10 years, somebody will have to still do everything for them. And they have, they complain about everything. Hallelujah. Amen. The question now is, someone may ask, is it not enough to accept Christ as my Lord and Savior? Come to church on Sunday and go to heaven? What's wrong with that? What are you talking about growing and all that? I mean, yeah, I, 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 I mean, yeah, somebody may be asking that question, yeah. But you see, what is important is that I accept Christ as my Lord and Savior. Yes, that's extremely important because without that, you will never be a Christian. Hallelujah. You can come to church all the days of your life and you'll never be a Christian. Hallelujah. And you can come to church and still heal the sick and do miracles and you still now enter heaven. I mean, because that's what Jesus said. I didn't say that. Jesus said people came to him and they said, We heal the sick, we did this, and they saw them enter heaven. Amen. So that's not what we're looking at. We're looking at the totality of something. He's called us. And the Bible says that in Hebrews, I'm sorry, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, he said something that is really exciting. And I love it all the time. Anytime I read that scripture, he said, but for we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to sit in church and do this. Hallelujah. Listen, before you were born, God has prepared some good works for you to do in advance. Mm. Oh, yes. Some kind of good works have been prepared for you to do. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's what the Bible is saying. For we are God's handiwork. And this scripture didn't come before we were born again. But it came after, in 8 and 9, it talks about the, the way we were born again. And then he said, it's not by way that anyone should boast. We are saved by grace. Hallelujah. Through faith, not by words that anyone should boast. That's what he's saying. Not by words that anyone, no one can, you can't boast that, yeah, that's why you're a Christian. No. It's grace. Through faith. Hallelujah. But then after that, he goes to tell and he says that, yeah, you've been saved by grace, but you've not been saved to come to church for people to save you. You've been saved by grace to come to church to do what? Good works, which God has prepared for you in advance. In advance, long ago, before your mother conceived you. He said, I have plans for you. He told Jeremiah. He said, before you were caught of blood in your mother's womb, I knew you. I knew you. I knew you. And, 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 and I just want, my goodness, I just want Christians to really understand that those babies are God's possessions. Because he knows them. He knows them by name. He gave Jesus a name before he was born. John the Baptist had a name before he was born. Hallelujah. When just, just Jacob's name was messing him up, he changed it. Hallelujah. Abraham had to change his name. Actually, God had to change his name. From Abraham to Abraham. Sarah to Sarah. Hallelujah. There, there, you see, there, there are things we need to really understand. Your mother might have given you a name without consulting God. When you became a Christian, God said that I knew you before your mother gave you that name. Change it. Yes, some people change their names when they become, they become Christians. And they know what God has told them. Hallelujah. If you ask me to change my name, I'll change it. Yes, I will. But I can see my name and myself going together. George and Farmer. And I'm a farmer. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. George is farmer. And I'm a farmer. 
So my name is playing out in my life. Is your name playing out in your life? Hallelujah. I'm a farmer. Not only do I farm plants, I'm farming you. Hallelujah. I'm the husband's man here. I'm the shepherd here. Hallelujah. A shepherd is a farmer. A farmer is not only one who plants grow crops. A farmer is also one who raises sheep and animals. Hallelujah. So I'm a shepherd. I'm a farmer. My name is played out in my life. Hallelujah. I don't know where my father got my name. But I believe that the Holy Spirit knew that he had to give me a name that will conform with my life. Hallelujah. Remember, check your name. The name of the idiot is not your name. Hallelujah. Take it. If that's your name, take it. That's not your portion. Take, I hear you. Hallelujah. Yeah, so we've just not been called to really just come to church, walk around church and go to heaven. That's not what we're called to do. Hallelujah. In as much as it's good to accept Christ and go to church, uh, that's fine. It's it's uh, because Bible says that never stop meeting together as you see the day approaching. So it means that God calls us to meet together, to come to church as we are doing. But is that the end of it? No, that's not all. Hallelujah. But God is calling us. Because if everybody says that, yeah, I've been called to come to church, that's fine. But who's going to preach? Yeah, I've been also saying to come to church. So I've come to church. Who is going to preach? Amen. Amen. Who is going to go on the street and do evangelism? How are the other people going to come to church? Or accept Christ? That's a question you have to ask. Amen. Amen. There is so much more to being a Christian. Who will be the intercessor? Who will be prayed for? If we all come to church and just sit around and go home. Oh, hallelujah. So we've been called for a reason. We've been called into something. Like we've been called to grow. We've not been called to be babies all, all the time. If we don't grow up, there are many things that we cannot do as Christians. If we don't grow up, there is a lot of there are a lot of things that the church cannot even do. Because you have a role to play, you have something to do. Hallelujah. So why should we grow up? I'm going to give you a few points and then I'll close. Why you need to grow up? Amen. One, we have to grow up so that we can be taught the fullness of what God has for us. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 11. We have much to say about this, but it is hard to make it clear to you because you no longer try to understand. So you cannot be taught certain mysteries. Hallelujah. If you don't grow up, you become limited of what you can receive. So many people come to church, but when the word is free, they can't understand. And because of that, they can't go beyond the salary. Paul looked at the people and he said, look, I have so much more, but you can't even understand it. Hallelujah. I have so much more to say about this topic. I have so much more to say about this story. I have so much more, but the point is that you cannot understand. And because you cannot understand, I cannot continue. Hallelujah. What about, can you go back to that scripture? What about if God himself is trying to download something in you, but you are so ignorant, you don't understand anything. So even as God is pouring into you, you are getting confused. You cannot understand it. So God now will have to leave you. Because he can, if he gives it to you, you get confused. Hallelujah. So God has much more to give to us. But it is hard to make it clear to you because you no longer to understand anything. He is really releasing mysteries out to you. He's bringing into your spirit mysteries. But unfortunately, you cannot really discern it. You cannot understand it. Sometimes we, 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 
Bible, I mean, God is giving us time, the Holy Spirit. And you know, sometimes I, I mean, I just realized that now this is not going to get anywhere. The people are not understanding this. And you are excited as a preacher. Uh, you are excited about the revelation. You are trying to break out. And the people can't get it. Because they are so dull. They can't get it. Amen. Amen. So we need to grow up so we can get deeper mysteries. So that much more can be released to us. Hallelujah. Number two. We have to grow up so that we do not distort the scriptures and be destroyed. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 16. And, and, and watch it. The fact that you are not growing up doesn't mean that, yeah, you can just walk around, but you can be destroyed by not growing up. Because you begin to distort the truth. You begin to mess up the truth. And he said that he writes Paul. He, I mean, at this time, Peter is writing about Paul. He's saying this about Paul. He said he writes the same way in all his letters, speaking in there of these matters. His letters contain some things that are hard to understand. Which ignorant people, people that have not grown up are so ignorant. And they are unstable people. And because of that, they, I mean, <laughs> you see, let me say this. You know, I started by saying people talk from church to church, from program to program, because they are so unstable and they cannot really, I mean, be stabilized and receive that which will really cause them to grow. So they never grow. They eat, they, they always get a diarrhea. They eat this one and they go and eat that one. They mix the food and then they begin to run. And everything, you see, they grow and they, I mean, they are becoming big and then they begin to have diarrhea. They can, they can sometimes have diarrhea for three months. Yeah, because the mixture is too much. They're eating wache, they're eating garri, they're eating eba, they're eating coconut, uh, they're eating everything. Everything mixed up. And when you do that, you get that here. Hallelujah. Amen. And when that happens to you, you know what happens? <laughs> eternal, eternal babies. Amen. Okay, so things that I have to understand, which ignorant and unstable people distort, as they do the other scriptures to their own destruction, when you begin to distort the truth, when you begin to distort the truth, when you begin to hear one thing and you make a doctrine out of it and you begin to really distort the truth, what happens is that you get into destruction mode and you realize that you are destroying yourself because now you train everything, you say everything, you have a way of really understanding everything and the Bible says that you are unstable. Hallelujah. And people like that, they say that they distort the truth and when they distort the truth, it is for their own destruction. They pretend to be for the truth, but they are destroying themselves. And there is people who are ignorant. They don't grow. They, don't, they, they are not taught properly. They don't really grow. They don't know the scriptures for themselves. So they begin to hear things and they begin to twist it. Somebody told us a story. I mean, um, he was new here. We were doing, uh, how do you call it, uh, devotion and uh, at that time, we were studying Ezekiel, and uh, we, we basically got to a point, and uh, he, he, because he's uh, an instrumentalist, has been to many, many places, and we got to the place where God was saying that uh, the people have hidden pictures and stuff like that be, be, uh, I mean, in the temple, and he said they should strip a wall and they would see all that behind, and he said that when in, in, in a church that he used to really minister because he was an instrumentalist, he said, in that place, when the moment the, <laughs> the pastor really propped that up, and he said that it means, he said he made a portrait out of that for two weeks. And he said that, bring pictures, all of you bring your pictures, 
and then we will pray and do certain things and certain things. And he said, when he really was using the daily guide, which was not made by us, but it was made by people that are sat down. And we had gone through it. We thought we read their uh, commentaries and everything. And basically, that was not what God made. God was revealing what the elder, I mean, the church was doing, the people in the temple were doing, and which was not right, and he was just telling the people, and he twisted it to say that because there were pictures in the temple, bring the pictures. And they began to bring their pictures and said, I was there for two weeks, all kinds of things were going on. But he said, I did not understand it, so I thought that was it. But as I really read the Bible myself, and he didn't read the Bible, he needed to find out in the context of which God was saying what he was saying. He never did. He had it. And I think he also took his pictures anyway. <laughs> but then he read the Bible, he took the daily guide, saw the scripture, read the Bible, understood it, understood what the commentary was, and he said, Wow, I've been deceived. Hallelujah. But that's the truth. If you don't pay attention, you'll be deceived. Because if he had acted like a barrier church, if he had been a barrier, when he had gone home, he would have taken the scriptures and he would have read it and he would have said that no, this is not what the Bible is saying. That God was trying to reveal hidden bad things, things that were not right, and then the hidden. He didn't say that, bring your picture and let's pray over it and have my church and you will be blessed and you will have. Uh, no, that was not what the Bible was saying. Hallelujah. Amen. The truth was being distorted. What God has said was being manipulated by someone for his own personal gain. Hallelujah. Amen. Number three. We need to grow up so that we don't live as unstable people being tossed around by every kind of teaching. And we know those who do that. I mean, basically, people who do that, who are unstable and are being tossed around by everything, Bible says that they don't receive anything. Amen. So, let's, let's go to Ephesians chapter 4, 13 and 14. And then we'll read James. Yeah, that's number three. So that we don't live as unstable people being taught or run by every kind of teaching. Until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature because we, we ought to grow up and become mature. Hallelujah. And become mature, attaining the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. 14. Then we will no longer be infants. Infants are what tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every way of teaching and by the killing and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. There are people that come around scheming. They will really peddle the word of God for their own personal gain. And we ought to be careful. We ought to be careful. And the Bible says that, and watch it, in in, in, in in uh, Second Peter that we just read, the three sixteen, we realize that the people were unstable. Hallelujah! He said that which ignorant and unstable people distort, as they do the other scriptures to their own destruction. I'm just trying to let you know that the the unstableness of your faith will really bring your destruction. But not only that, it will also also cause you to have your prayers unanswered. Go to uh, um, the Ephesians. Attaining the whole measure of the fullness, then we will no longer be eight fountains tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the killing and craftiness of people in their deceitful schemes. Now, beloved in the Lord, let's look at people that are tossed here and there in James. Hallelujah. James 1 says to 8. I'm trying to let you understand that if you don't grow up, certain things that will really happen. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed 
by the wind. People who are being tossed here and there are doubters. And what does the Lord say? That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Why? Such a person is double-minded and again is and again unstable in all they do. So we've seen unstableness, and it is a sign of Christian immaturity. Hallelujah. Unstableness is a sign of Christian immaturity. If we are going to grow up this year, then we need to really come to the point that we are aiming for stability in our faith. Many of us are not stable. Many of us are not stable. Why? Because we don't have time to sit down, to eat the food that our mothers are giving to us so we can grow well. Ask the, ask the, uh, ask the mothers in the house. The reason, they, even if the child doesn't want to eat, they want them to eat, is that if they don't force these kids to eat, the kids will come. Amen. Amen. So some mothers spend more time feeding their kids than working. It's a job in itself. Hallelujah. They have to be paid. Mothers, do you agree with me? Yes. Yeah. It's it's harder than going to eight, for eight to five. Because eight to five, you sit behind your computer and you're just working. But this one, sometimes you have to, you yourself, you have to become a baby, you have to crawl with them. Then you're holding the food. Then they will, and, and kids love that. Amen. And some Christians are like that. They want the pastor to be crawling after them. Read your Bible. Then they go, then they go and cry. <laughs> the pastor has to follow them. And they come. Read the Bible, then they'll put it aside, and then they'll just mix up, and then the pastor, and then they will fall like they are sick, and then the pastor will have to please. Hallelujah. We become like mothers trying to feed our children. Running after them everywhere. I see that sometimes I, I laugh. Because I remember when this boy was a kid. Hallelujah. I'm going to say, I'm going to get into trouble. <laughs> I'll get into trouble, so I'm going to say that. Amen. Yeah, but that's, it's sometimes fun. Hallelujah. It's sometimes very, very funny. I mean, like, I, I, I have cried a lot as an adult, as a fan. <laughs> but I'm tired. I don't want to cry after you too. <laughs> Hallelujah. You just imagine, just, I mean, just picture this. Can you stand up? Just picture this. No, no, you are your father. <laughs> <laughs> just picture, picture. I'm seeing it. And Janelle. And he going after Janelle on force. You can imagine that. I mean, wouldn't that be fun? Take a picture and bring it to us. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, Francis is asking me to go in. Let him do it. He was my father. <laughs> Look at that. Look at his Sakura ball hair. <laughs> Hallelujah. Going after, what is it, uh, uh, Stephanie? Going after Stephanie. I've been trying to. Mother is going out to the market and he, he's babysitting on that day and the baby basically is not eating and he's fed up and he, the baby is crying and he can't stand the feet like this. So you have to go on your phones. Hallelujah. And you, are, you see, you saw it so you are laughing. You live in the same house. Hallelujah. And I mean, I'm tired of doing that. Amen. Amen. Go up. Go up. Hallelujah. You can sit down. Grow up. Because I'm tired of following you on the force. If you grow up, we'll stand and we'll do it together. Hallelujah. Isn't that not funny? And you know, you haven't realized that. That's what you take us through every day. Yeah, that's what you take us through every day. 
It is me, you know. Like an old man like me. You know when they are dancing for today, I don't dance for today. And here. I'm an old man. And you want me to go on my father? Please. Hallelujah. Number four. <laughs> we have to grow up so we can distinguish good from evil. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 14. We, if we don't grow up, most of the time we are not able to distinguish good from evil. So we struggle with it. The thing is really, really bad. But because we are not grown, we are still babies in the Lord. After 10, 20 years in the Lord, we are still babies. And we ask him questions that kids have to ask. Hallelujah. Can you, can you quickly go to, I mean, let's read from uh, 12. In fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again. Hallelujah. Because he, the apostle saw that these people, after all that has been invested in them, they ought to be teachers. They have to begin to teach other people. But they have to be taught all over again. And, it's, and that's really I mean, tough for the apostle. And he said, you need milk, not solid food. Amen. Just imagine a 20-year-old child. You, you didn't get it. That 20-year-old baby, maybe that's better. 20-year-old baby is also drinking milk. When you give him solid food, he can't even chew. He has 32. Rollins called them baby sweet. <laughs> but they can't chew like that. And they want to be fed with milk. <laughs> Hallelujah. They are babies, but they have sharp teeth. No, you see them as babies, they are old. They are very old, but you see them as babies because they are still growing, because they are still on the force. But just let them open, and they are crying for milk. So mommy picked up and was trying to give milk, and then the neighbor saw it and said, "Hey!" <laughs> he saw the teeth and was like, "Wow!" <laughs> Hallelujah. Some people come here, they are new, and they see some people, and they think that these people have to teach them, and they themselves need to be taught. Hallelujah. And they say, ah, but how can they be here for 10 years and so? Amen. Amen. And they are fighting for, oh, my goodness. Somebody come came today, and the person is, needs prayer. And he's being attended to. And then somebody who has been 10 years here is angry. Sure. Yeah, but you see me who pray for me. He's praying for 10 years. I should have gotten out and pray for that person. After 10 years, if you still are a baby, fighting, it's, it's like, <laughs> you know, hallelujah. Do you know that some mothers fight uh, over the milk with their kids? They themselves are babies. They themselves are babies. <laughs> Hallelujah. Grow up. Hallelujah. Grow up. I'm expecting that some of you will take responsibilities. You will become responsible, taking care of other people, teaching other people. Hallelujah. Now go to 13. You need milk, not solid food. Why? Anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. So when you talk about deep things about righteousness, they say, how can this be? Because they never grow. So they are still babies. I mean, let me tell you the truth. Every new Christian thing that Christianity, I mean, when you are talking about righteousness and things like that, it's hard for them. 
because they see the life they were in and the transition into the new life, it's not easy. I'm telling you, if anybody tells you it's easy, that's a lie. It's not easy. People struggle. Hallelujah. Even though the Bible says that spiritually they become new creation. And indeed they become new creation in the spirit. But physically they're struggling with things. They're fighting with things. Hallelujah. I always want people to understand that yes, we at the moment we come, God has eternally done something about us. But we ought to also go through a certain kind of process to really come to that point where we begin to manifest what is in us. Hallelujah. Amen. But we have to really submit to godly teaching. Go into the Word. Search the Word. Spend time with God in prayer. Hallelujah. If, if, if we, we continue to sleep the way we sleep, if we continue to really not study the word and just walk around and watch TV and watch all kinds of things, let the babies watch the TV and let's encourage them to stop. This thing worries me. And, and, and it's a fact. I mean, it worries me a lot that Christians are able to sit down and watch an ungodly movie for two hours or more. I mean, I don't know, how much does a movie last? About two hours, okay. They can sit down for two hours, watch a movie, an ungodly movie for two hours without blinking an eye. Some even will be in their pants because they don't want to miss something that was happening and they just in fact listen to me carefully they, they have their remote in their hands they can pause it but the suspense is so great that even pausing it disturbs them they, they lose their senses that even if they pause when they come back they will come and meet the same spot sometimes they forget other times they are so much engrossed in what they are doing that we, we is not really Bad, a bad thing. Stopping and going to the washroom is much more worse than weaving on themselves. And you see adults weaving in their sofa. <laughs> yes. Just watching. Hallelujah. I, I don't think you understand. Hallelujah. Good from evil. 
maturity in the Lord. Those who have grown up in the Lord, they can distinguish good from evil. They don't fall easily. I'm not saying they don't make mistakes. We all do make mistakes, one way or the other. Hallelujah. But what I'm trying to say is that you are able to distinguish good from evil. Many Christians can do that. They can distinguish. If they have been in the Lord for 20 years. They still can't distinguish good from evil. And some of the things they say, when you hear, you get sick. But I don't want you to be like that. I don't want this year, whatever it takes for you to grow. Don't miss any Bible study. Don't miss any prayer meeting. Because every one of them is going to add to you. It's going to help you. Last time I was asking some students, and I, 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 think, I think it was Felix, I was asking him, I said that if you go, if you, if you miss a lecture, what do you do? And he said, yeah, I will ask my mates for their notes and for what was taught and everything. And I said, okay, that's good. And interestingly, that Sunday, he was not in church because he had to go somewhere. And I asked him, have you checked? <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Lecture notes, you go after him. Preaching how many of us, if we don't come to church, we just ask our brothers or our sisters? This time it's even easy for us. But in the first place, he told me that he wouldn't even miss lectures for anything. That's what that's what you said. He said he won't miss lectures. And for what he missed that lecture, that I mean, not that said that service on that Sunday, he said he wouldn't miss lectures for that. But he would miss the church service for that. And but what I'm trying to say, I'm not condemning, but what I'm trying to say is that the things we take for granted, it's not, it, look, it, it's, you have done worse. You have done worse. How many of us have missed a church service for a football match? You see, we are so ungodly in that to say the truth. How many of us, uh, you see, whether it's men or women are involved, we check with women to what they miss for. Okay, how many of us have missed church service for a football match? Stand up. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. These are faithful. I'm telling you, you see, sometimes we don't understand. Yes, it was an error. But if you can't stand up to the error you made, you will never change. If you will hide it, I'm telling you, you will never change. Because what happens is that then you don't see that as an error. But when you stand up to it, now you know. And I know that none of them is going to do that again. And I know that even maybe they did that in the past. We all did. I don't know when we came to Christ our first cup of nations. My goodness. I mean, go to the church, it's empty. We are all watching. Ghana is playing. And unfortunately, they are playing at church time. You are sitting there, you think you have never done it. We have done that before. I join you. Hallelujah. I've done it as a Christian. But let me tell you, Pastor now, let me tell you, when you begin to grow, something changed. In 2010, uh, no, not 2010, 20, is it 2014? When we went to Brazil? Yeah, to Brazil was 2014. In 2014, Brazil, uh, uh, World Cup, you can ask my wife. We went to South Africa for 2010, both of us. We love soccer. It's today, I'm, I'm preaching in church. It doesn't matter who is playing, I don't care. But those days, I will follow. Cup of Nations 2008. I said, we went around Ghana. 
We travel to Takran, we bought in Takran, we bought in Kumasi, we bought in Accra. Accra, we bought how many matches? We got really priority tickets to watch very good matches. In South Africa, we even won uh, Brazil and uh, Cote d'Ivoire. We, we will do whatever, desperately do whatever to get a ticket to win the match. Hallelujah. You see, that's another sign from the Lord that much. Why you love me so much that you follow me. Hallelujah. Because I was a crazy soccer fan. In 2014, God started this ministry. And let me tell you, we have planned for 2013 with some of so my friends in London, white people. We have planned. We have booked, we have got tickets. We have booked hotels, rented cars. Then I became a Christian. No, I became a pastor. And I had to pastor a church. And then, fortunately or unfortunately, there was during that period of the uh, of the World Cup, there was a um, a supernatural uh, school in Miami. Ask her. We were just thinking. Then I said, No, I will never sacrifice this program for a soccer match. Tickets have been paid for. Hotels have been paid for. Yet, I went to Miami for a Christian program and then go to the world. That's how it is. But I have done it before. I have been there before. I have been where you are. The point I'm trying to make is that we all need to come to that point of making sacrifices of the things we love to do. If you are a Christian, you need to make sacrifices. Sometimes I am here and church has closed. The right thing for me to do is to go home and watch Formula One. Yes, but there are people who want to see me, who want counsel, who want prayer, and I will sit here. I will sit here. Sometimes I will steal one or two minutes and then watch on my phone. In my office there, I will see on my phone. So I put it there, and when nobody is coming, then I will play play. <laughs> and then when somebody comes, I will pause. Hallelujah. And so I can focus on the people. The, I would have gone home in the, oh my goodness, I would be home. But the point I'm trying to say is that we are growing. I am not growing yet. If I have arrived, I'll be there by now. I am not there. As long as we are not in heaven, there is room for improvement. That's what I'm saying. Every one of us, there is room for improvement. Hallelujah. I have never turned what I do why. So that's so that to be done. Amen. Amen. There is so much more to be done. We haven't done everything. Yes, God has by His grace done a lot of things. But we haven't arrived. And therefore, there is still room for us to grow. Hallelujah. Amen. Until we die and we find ourselves in heaven, there is more for us to do. Amen. Amen. Number five, I'll finish right now. I'll get to seven right now and then I'm done. We have to grow so that false teachers and false prophets will not take advantage of us. And we've read Acts chapter 17, verse 11 already about the parent church. If you don't go up and check the scripture, everyone will tell you whatever. And you'll believe it. But as you go into scripture and begin to see the truth, no one can deceive you. Because after they preach, you're going to check and find out whether that is in scripture. And if it, it, it is not, then you have every right to question. Hallelujah. Because this young woman, at least for nothing at all, knows that men, adult men don't bad adult women. Hallelujah. Amen. When they said that if there, there is something she's going to get sick or not what whatever. But whatever was going to happen to her, she has to go and then be the 
Then she will strip naked. He's not my husband. He's not my whatever. And then I strip. He's not my father. And I strip naked. And then the guy is really bathing me. And she said, I won't do that because I don't think that's right. It is only those who know the Bible and know that that is not right. Hallelujah. Amen. Because those who do not know, they are still being deceived. And on just 31st December, on, on TV, hey, have we gone that low? in church and how can that be practiced in church it surprises me but if we don't speak against it vulnerable people will fall for it challenge the pastor ask him where is it in the bible that you have to buy me ask him if he can prove it then it's not happening what kind of a church is that this is demonic not from the Lord. This is that cannot be from the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And he had the guts to say that yes, people will be saying speaking against it. Of course, we'll speak against it. Because we have to speak against what is not right. Hallelujah. Amen. We listen, the days that we shut up are over. Wrong. Wrongs must be really brought to the fore. People will have to, if you don't talk to your church members, they will go. Hallelujah. Because people will give false testimonies. I'm telling you, don't watch everything. It's not everything that is for your watching. Don't watch everything. If you are really mature and you are descending, you will not watch certain things. Hallelujah. Let's change. For the days are evil. Bible says that the devil himself can turn into an angel of light. And he will deceive you. He will deceive people. And people are being deceived every single day. Ghana, rise up. The church in Ghana must rise up. Because the things that are happening in church in Ghana are not Christian. They are not right. I don't put me there. Put me. I don't care. I don't care. Hallelujah. I have nothing to lose. If John the Baptist will speak against Herod and his uh, and Herodias and go to prison and he doesn't care, I don't care either. Hallelujah. Amen. Come after me. The point I'm trying to make is that we have entertained too many things in the church and pastors we have shut up and our congregation is going after these things and they will come back and corrupt the congregation that you have. They will bring all kinds of demons. You yourself, you don't know a demon, so they come and sit down and they mess you up. They go, they take the bath them, and next time you are sleeping with them. Because what they carry, you have no idea. Do you know what? Do you know what I've been putting them? You have no idea what I've been putting them. You have no idea. How can you take and then they have a special pomade they have to use to pomade them. And then they give them a special pants to wear. I mean, what kind of craziness is that? When the pastors begin to buy pants for church members? When did it start? When did Jesus do that? Yeah, Jesus said that if somebody doesn't have a clothing, yeah, just clothe the person. He didn't say, well, you would go, ah, please. Everything is going it will be going beyond limits. And if we, nobody is ready to talk about it, it will continue. If this church will grow, if we will grow, we need to begin to speak against these things. Yes. You are afraid. You are not afraid. Then somebody is saying, hey, you can you. So what? Let them come in the spirit. Let them come in the flesh. Let them come in every kind of way. I know my God will protect me. But if the, if the, the apostles of all were sold in two by speaking the truth, I'm not better than them. I'm not afraid of anything. I'm not afraid of death. Bible says that Jesus has overcome death. So I'm not afraid. It doesn't matter to me. What matters is your soul. 
If I can tell you something that will make you right and that will protect your soul, I'm blessed. I don't care the consequences. Because if you are saved and I die, we'll meet in heaven. We'll meet in heaven. And that's of more importance to me than you having the nicest car in town. It doesn't add anything to my life. Hallelujah. What you buy that car? We are not sitting in it. Hallelujah. I'm not your family member. If you die, I will inherit it. Hallelujah. But if you know Christ and live for Christ, I know for nothing at all who meet in heaven. I know who meet in heaven. Hallelujah. If you buy a nice car and go to hell, I'm not coming to hell. I will see you again. And I want to see you. Amen. But the blessing of God really adds everything as well. God can give you riches. Amen. Read your Bible. He said the blessing of God makes one rich without painful toil. Hallelujah. Amen. I seek for the blessing of God. That's what I declare it. I declare it. I decree it. I ask for it. I pray for it. Hallelujah. Amen. But I also pray that I'm walking righteousness. That's what we do. We seek after God first. Please. Let's rise up. Look, if you stop patronizing it, they will stop saying it. If my church members don't go, and somebody else's church members don't go, they will stop doing what they are doing. But because you are running after them. Why? Because you yourself, you don't know the truth. You don't know the truth. Amen. Amen. What are you saying? Yes, I am saying it because I know people here still follow. They go. They go. All that they hear, they still go. Listen, people are not content. I don't know what we're seeking for. The world is a deceiver. And we're being deceived by the world. So we're running after everything. Hallelujah. Amen. We can't distinguish good from evil. We cannot. We sit in church. We are not good. We are still babies, forever babies. So we don't know good from evil. We see evil, we follow. In fact, we follow everything, whether it's good or bad. We don't even know whether it's good or it's bad. That's what the Bible is saying. Hallelujah. Amen. They cannot distinguish good from evil. Number five. Oh, I have number five already. Six. Six. Amen. Amen. We need to grow up so we can be teachers to teach other people. We read uh, already Hebrews 5 12. He said that he thought that when he came, he would find them teaching others. Hallelujah. Amen. But unfortunately, that was not what was happening. In fact, though by this time, though by this time, we ought to be teachers. You need someone to teach you the elementary truth. It's not even the secondary truth. The cycle truth again. And the way he wrote it, he said, you need someone to teach you the elementary truth of God's word. Which means you have been taught already. Who got class one, who got class two now? Who mommy and just who visits the same class? After five years. After five years, you won't be trapped with your TV. Your TV. The folks in class one, Papa. You are, you are all beard and you're still in class one. I'm not you ashamed. Aren't you ashamed? After five years, still class one. Some people, <laughs> I remember in secondary school, the, the world was. Amen. Amen. Some people, they write first world war. <laughs> Second world war. And I thought it had to end there. Because we have only two world wars. But they can fight ten world wars. Never progressing. 
and we bring that to church, we never progress, we never grow. If you have been here for seven years, you need to begin to do something else. I like I, I thank God for your life and for what you are doing. But please, these things are not to be warned by you. Get out and do something. Begin to do something. This year, begin to do something. Grow up. Grow up. You cannot sit down like that forever. Running after everything. Just one thing, literally. Everything they follow. They are unable to sit down to read their own Bible. They split channel to channel, searching. I had the hand issue, then they go. And come also, come over to me, I can issue. Hallelujah. Look, you have a little bit of fire. I have a little bit of fire. If we put it together and we find it, we'll have flames. But if it's me alone, I, I have the fire, you don't have the fire. Don't complain. And say, I had Yeshi, I had food Yeshi, and I had Yeshi, and I had Yeshi, and I work as a wash. You, after all going to all the places, work as a I do, are you yourself hot? Are you yourself on fire? Unfortunately, you carry water. So wherever you go, there's fire, you go and put it off. Fire service. Hallelujah. You have become the, the, the fireman in the other way. Instead of you lighting up the fire, you go and put it off. You have the fire tender, the latest model. When the fire, the fire people came here to train us, they said they are very expensive, even the one they have. That doesn't do anything. Expensive. They said they can, one fire tender can buy how many V8s? 12 V8s. But yours, it can buy 20. You can put off any fire. Everywhere you go, you put off the fire. We got to compensate now. And that's my next point. Hallelujah. Number seven. <laughs> so we can rid ourselves from jealousy, quarrel, and all kinds of uh, uh, worldly ways. Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter three, verse three. You are still worldly, for since there is jealousy and quarrel among you, are you not worldly? Are you not acting like here he was? Paul was saying that when he came, let's go from verse one. Let's read from verse one for everyone to really understand it properly. Hallelujah. He says, brothers and sisters, I could not address you as people who live by the Spirit. People who are mature in the Lord live by the Spirit. If you are really mature in the Lord, you live by the Spirit. The Spirit of God, who is inside of you, begins to run your life for you. He begins to guide your steps. He begins to lead you. Hallelujah. And he says, brothers and sisters, I could not address you as people who live by the Spirit, but as people who are still worthy, near in in Christ. You cannot take spiritual things. So when even you hear that somebody in your family is a witch, you take a cattle to work, kill them. It's a spiritual thing. You don't carry cattle The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Yes. Hallelujah. So the weapons we carry, they are not weapons of the world. They are not carnal. They are mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. That's what the Bible says. That's what we do. We don't go around carrying machetes to kill people. Your prayer, when you clap your hands, you release fire. Hallelujah. When, this, when God had to open the Red Sea, he said, just stretch the, the rod in your hand. That's all. You don't have to go and carry bulldozers to come and do a trench like now they do, and they do a tunnel under the water, and then the cars go through, and train goes through, and uh, no, 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 we don't do that. You see, it is the world that does that. 
Hallelujah. He says you walk through water. You walk through fire. You don't need any kind of physical, um, how do you call it, uh, um, fireproof uh, vest or whatever. You can still walk through fire. Bible says that you will hold snakes and they will not bite you. Hallelujah. Because they bite, but you will not die. And we see that in scripture. Paul, Bible says that a, a, a very poisonous snake bit Paul. And every time, everyone thought that he was going to turn back and die. And then they waited and waited and waited. Paul was not dying. Now he became a God for them. They began, they decided to worship me. He said, no, don't worship me. You don't know, it is what I carry. And you can carry the same thing. And you took opportunity to share the word of God with them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't have to take a cutlass. You have to begin to pray. And they will come and confess. And they will tell you what you have is what we need. Hallelujah. You're making it all wrong. You're going all the wrong way. Who told you? I mean, listen, let me tell you. We are in Africa, which is work. They're still operational. They eat at the bola. Why? You know, white witches eat at restaurants. White witches they eat at restaurants. You know, for part of the world, witches eat at the refuge town. That's where they eat. They eat human, they drink human blood and eat human flesh. Hallelujah. Amen. Tell me it's not a lie until they chew your body. Then you will know that it's true. Hallelujah. Now. You're looking at me. <laughs> we need to bring ourselves of all these things. Go to the next one, verse 2. I'm done. Hallelujah. I gave you milk, not solid food, for you were not ready, yet ready for it. Indeed, you are still not ready. Church, are you ready for solid food? Yes. Some are ready, some are not ready. Those who are ready, bear with me, because we need to grow together. That's what we're going to do. What I'm trying to do this morning is to let you understand the need for you to grow. We have to grow. We cannot really be infants. We cannot continue to drink milk. We need to grow. And we, in the subsequent weeks and days and whatever that is coming, we're going to really learn. You know, some people say, but how can I read the Bible? We're going to teach you how to read the Bible. We're going to help you to read the Bible. We're going to help you to pray. We're going to disciple you, get you, you to understand. You're going to cut your sleep. Hallelujah. Because you have to cut it. If you can't cut the hours at work, which I believe that that's really casting stone for you, so you can't change it. It's not you don't you don't call the shots in your office, so you can't change that. So I understand that. But then, what are you able to control? It's your sleep time. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Or that you don't, you don't have control. No, we have control. You have control over your whole sleep. Yes. Okay, if you do, then you can't go and tell your boss that I have to cut some of the time to really uh, um, pray and uh, read the Bible. I do understand. And I don't want you to steal uh, your boss's time to do that. But what I'm trying to say is that then we need to make time for it in another way. And that's going to come from your sleep. Amen. Some of us, we take truck truck, but we're going to really, it's going to cost us money because maybe because of the traffic we have to take a motorbike. And that will cost you a little bit more. Hallelujah. Amen. Because if a sacrifice is not made, I'm telling you, it's going to be tough to get the thing that you need in Christ. Everything that we have to really get in Christ, sacrifices have to be made. You cannot really walk and live for Christ in your convenience. This is not a convenience store. This is serious business where you have to make serious commitments. Are we ready to make those commitments? Yes. Because we have to. Unless we don't want to grow, 
unless we don't want to progress, unless we still want to be infants. But if we are going to grow, then sacrifices will have to be made. It's going to cost us. Yes, some of us it will cost us money because you have to take uh, probably Uber or motorbike instead of sitting in that truck train, sitting in the traffic for heaven knows how long. Some form of sacrifice will have to be made. And how many of us are ready to make those sacrifices? Someone will have to sacrifice to go on the streets. Sure. I'm telling you, because there are souls perishing, and it takes mature Christians to go out there to defy the odds. Yeah. They will call you names. They will say that, hey, look at them, they think they are the only Christians. Hallelujah. Yeah. People will, they will say all kinds of things about you. But if you are a mature Christian, you develop thick skin, it doesn't affect you. What you desire is to do something for Jesus. You will never go ahead of him. You will always follow him. Because he is going to show you the way. And by the power of his spirit, that he is going to really put inside of you. Jesus walked with his disciples for three and a half years, yet he said, go and wait for the Holy Spirit. Some of us have desire for the Holy Spirit is dead. We don't desire. Bible says that equally desire the spiritual gifts. Equally desire. In fact, he did say that covetous. I thought covetousness was a sin until I saw that. Then I realized that covetousness in another form is a sin. But coveting for the things of the Lord is not sinful. And then I saw that he said that even for the Bible, I have to crave for it. I have to crave. I have to be hungry for it. Hallelujah. Amen. And you he heard uh, uh, yesterday when the guy was uh, explaining uh, uh, if somebody is a drug addict, how desperate they are when they need a drug. I want you to be that desperate for the word of God. Amen. Be that desperate. We've taken things for granted for too long. We work majestically to church. Hey, who works like that to the office? Who goes to the office two hours late? Tell me, who goes to the office two hours late? Who does that here? Two hours late. But who comes to the office one hour late uh, to change? That's it. And some come two hours late. They want majestically. And when they come, they give them a seat to cry. I was wrong with them. This is a sign. Why do seat to open? It's only in church. I said it's only in church. Yeah. But that's changing this year. Yeah. In this church, that's changing. Yeah. It's changing. You see, the point is that we have pampered Christians that they never grew. After 20 years, they are still babies. Because they whine. And pastors are afraid of the whining of church members. And they will stop. If you stop, that's fine. If you don't want heaven and want to go to hell, it's your choice. Yeah, but pastor, how can you speak like that? You don't care about them. I care about you. But if you make a choice, God is not forcing anybody to go to hell. But he still puts some people in hell. Yes. If God will put you there, who am I? Amen. Amen. Yeah, but you have to teach me. I'm done with teaching you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. How many have teaching you? And I'm still teaching. And you are still not hearing. If you don't hear, that's when it's going to end up. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, but they will leave church. And they will see, and they will leave church. And the church will be empty. And then, then there will be people in church. And you see, it's, it's, uh, you have to grow. And uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we have, we have to grow. But if the truth will let us grow, Jesus, when he was leaving, how many people were left? 120. At a point, 5,000 were following him. They all left. Hallelujah. Amen. So if we have, we can have 10,000 and they all leave. Hallelujah. Amen. Because one truth can take everybody away. 
It's only one truth. He said, eat my body and drink my... Ah, no, 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 no. Who taught you that? We taught you a Messiah. We taught you a prophet. And we said we should eat your body. Yes, eat. Don't you eat now. When I make communion out right now, won't you eat? Is it not the body and the blood? It is only ignorant people who run away. Hallelujah. Truth is supposed to really build you up. But when Jesus spoke the truth, people run away. Let me tell you the truth. The truth is that we all are eager to serve him and make him to heaven. We don't want to be forever babies. We can't be forever babies. Hallelujah. Amen. We cannot be forever babies. We need to grow. We need to grow. And beloved, I want us to grow together. I want us to grow together. We have to do this together. We have to rise up together. We have to come together and begin to pursue Jesus. We need to do it. You will, you, will, you will bear with me. I think you really, really understand what I'm saying. Because many of us, and I can tell you for a fact, I know your heart. Yes, I know there are some who don't care. And Bible talks about those as well. He says they are being seared. Their mind is seared. And I understand that. But even that, God says that I will take out their hearts of stone and give them a heart of flesh. And I believe that the hardest of hearts here, God is ready to touch and give them a heart of flesh. Amen. So I know that God is willing and ready to turn our lives around. But are we willing and ready? Are we? Let's change. This is the year of our growth. We need to begin to grow. We need to begin. I'm not looking down on you. I don't think that I am better than you. The Spirit of God is the Spirit of God. The Spirit that really changes you is the same Spirit that changes me. The Spirit that makes you grow is the same Spirit that makes me grow. If only you unveil, the difference is the availability. If you avail yourself to Him, you will make Him grow. He is ready. You are supposed to be willing to sit down, take your Bible. How many of us are, so, are ready to put away the Facebook, to put away the movies? How many of us are ready to make that kind of sacrifice, to put these things away and begin to take our Bibles and begin to study? The Lord is willing to teach us. The Holy Ghost, Jesus said that I have to go so that the Holy Spirit will come and he will teach you. He's willing to teach you. He's willing to teach me. He's willing to teach us all. But it is up to us. Obey ourselves. If you don't take the Bible, how is it going to teach you? It is only when you take it that it's going to begin. I don't know where you stand, and I don't know how eager you are. But this morning, I want you to really get into a time of prayer. Beloved in the Lord, let's bow down our heads. Paul wrote to, a, to Christians and Peter wrote to Christians. I am not saying you are not a Christian. You've been a Christian for a long time. But you have not grown. You are still a baby. But now you are willing to grow. You are willing to really go with Jesus. You are ready to go through the process. You're ready to make the sacrifices that you have to grow. At this moment, with all eyes closed, beloved in the Lord, if today you want to take a new step, you want to tell Jesus that I'm ready to go through the process of when you plant a flower today, 
you will have to water it. You have to weed around it. There is a lot that you have to do for that plant to grow and bear fruit. But that plant would have to really avail itself for that word. If the plant says that I won't allow you to weed around me, that plant is going to die. So somebody here would have to make that sacrifice, that decision, that I'm ready to be nurtured. I'm ready to be discipled. I'm ready to go through a process that will make me grow. If you are that person, I want you to stand up on your feet. You are ready for growth. You want to really avail yourself and again, I'm not saying that you are, not a, you are not a Christian. I'm not talking to unbelievers. I'm talking to believers who know in their life that they have not grown. And now they are willing to grow. They are willing. They are veiling themselves. It doesn't matter how long you have been in church. That's not what I'm talking about. You can be in church for 20 years and still be a baby. When Paul wrote to the Corinthian church, they were still babies after so many years. And he says, when I came back, I thought I was going to feed you with solid food, but you still need milk. God bless you. 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 For your willingness. For your willingness. For your lives. And I pray that God Himself will take us all through this. Let us pray. For those who are standing, I just want you to say this after me Jesus, I thank you that you have saved my life. Now, I desire to grow beyond the level that I am at the moment. I sacrifice my time. I sacrifice my money. I sacrifice myself and I avail myself to you. And I say, Jesus, take me and help me to grow May your spirit nurture me from today. May he lead me. May he direct me so I can grow to become the one you have called me to be. I thank you that you will do this with me. I am weak, but your spirit is strong. May he give me every strength that I need to carry on. I know destruction will come. Manipulation will come. I will be tired at a point in time. But when I get tired, may you strengthen me. When I am weak, may you make me strong. When I can walk, May you carry me. I need you. I confess. I cannot do this by myself. So I need you to help me. I offer myself as a living sacrifice. Take me. Use me for the glory of your holy name. May this year be a year for my growth. I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for this beautiful people. I honor you for their lives. But I, I, I don't have it to really raise them. But your spirit that is in me will do it. Holy Ghost, I pray this morning and I commit these ones to your hands. Help me to help them to grow.
raise them to become giants in the kingdom. Father, may they go through a process this year that will see them becoming giants even in the kingdom. Father, I thank you that you have heard us and you will do this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now let